Hello and thank you for watching. My name is Jesper. I am a sixth year medical student and this is a part two video where we will talk about dehydration and water replacement therapy in children. In the previous video, so part one, we went through the basics of the water electrolyte balance in the body and the physiological regulation. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can look at it first if you want. Let's look more clinically at the water needs of infants. They need around 100 to 150 milliliter per every kilogram. If we put that into contrast to older children or adults, then the requirement is much less. In adults, the average intake is around 40 milliliter per kilogram. Of course, there are many factors which influence the need for water, such as activity, body temperature, climate, diseases and metabolism. Now let's talk about dehydration and let's define it. We can define it as a condition resulting from excessive loss of body water leading to varying degrees of change in the water salt balance of the organism. When we do a status evaluation there are some questions we should ask ourselves to determine the appropriate treatment. Does the child experience dehydration? That's the first thing we have to ask ourselves. To answer this, we can look at some symptoms, some signs, the anamnesis and lab values of the patient. Let's start with symptoms of dehydration. The skin can be very revealing for a number of reasons. The first indicator we will look at is turgor. Turgor means the skin's elasticity and in dehydration the turgor often decreases. The next we will look at is perfusion and perfusion refers to the amount of oxygen delivered to the tissues of the body and in dehydration the blood volume can drop and this way there can be a reduction of perfusion to the different tissues. This can then lead to the skin getting a so-called marbled appearance. We can also then check the capillary refill time by pressing, for example, a finger, we can easily roughly check how much time is needed for the capillaries to refill with oxygenated blood. The capillary refill time might be prolonged in dehydration, and we note that normally it is less than two seconds in healthy hydrated individuals. Another thing we can check is the mucous membranes. For example, in the mouth, we can look to see if it is sticky or drier than normal. It also then speaks for dehydration. Also in severe dehydration of infants, the fontanelles of the skull can appear sunken. In dehydration, the pulse generally increases to compensate for the lost blood volume. The blood pressure may drop, urine diuresis can decrease, and the consciousness of the child might vary from excited and restless all the way to somnolent or even in a comatose state in severe cases. For the clinical lab values, the first thing we might check is the blood hematocrit. The blood hematocrit essentially tests the proportional amount of red blood cells in the blood and in dehydration the hematocrit might be seemingly higher since the fluid portion of the blood is reduced due to fluid loss. So less fluid means more red blood cells in proportion to the fluid amount. On the other side, if a patient drinks too much and is hyperhydrated, then the plasma might increase, hence lowering the hematocrit. We may also check serum electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, which might indicate what type of dehydration is taking place. We essentially divide dehydration into three major types. Isotonic, in which there is a proportional amount of water with electrolytes lost. Hypotonic, in which electrolytes is primarily lost. And hypertonic, primarily water is lost. We can categorize them depending on the sodium levels as well. In an isotonic state, the sodium levels will be from around 130 to 150 millimoles per liter. In a hypotonic state, the sodium is less than 125 millimoles per liter and in a hypertonic state the sodium level will be more than 150 millimoles per liter. We can also categorize dehydration depending on the degree. So light, moderate and severe are the degrees we usually categorize. I'm going to give you some numbers here and I don't think you have to memorize them. Just bear with me because it will give some overview. In an infant 50 milliliter per kilogram 
or 5% of body weight is light dehydration. 100 milliliter per kilogram or 10% is moderate, whilst 150 milliliter per kilogram or 15% of body weight is severe dehydration. In adolescence, however, it takes less proportional water loss, so light is 30 milligram per kilogram or around 3%, moderate is 50 milliliter per kilogram or around 6%, and 80 milliliter per kilogram or 9% is considered heavy dehydration. There are plenty of causes for dehydration, and let's talk about some of the most frequent ones, especially in kids. A frequent cause we see in pediatric patients is dehydration due to either diarrhea and or vomiting. It may or may not be due to an infection, like a bacteria or a virus, or can be due to some chronic disease, like for example Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. It could also be some anatomical defect in the GI tract causing the diarrhea. For infections causing gastroenteritis in kids, usually viruses are the culprits. Especially often seen is the norovirus. Also the rotavirus and enteroviruses can often be seen. Bacteria are less common, but can also occur, such as for example Salmonella, E. coli or Shigellosis. Parasites like Giardia can also cause diarrhea in rarer cases. Other non-GI causes of dehydration can be burn victims, febrile states, diabetes with ketoacidosis, medication, toxins and alcohol. Extreme warm weather and or lack of proper water intake is also one. There are many more causes, but let's not go on forever about this. But remember that in pediatric patients, the main reason for severe dehydration is diarrhea and vomiting, often with infection. Lastly, we will talk about treatment with fluid replacement therapy. First, we want to determine the degree of water loss. If we know the prior weight before dehydration, we can easily calculate the water loss percentage. Let's say that an adult man weighs 75 kilo and loses 4.5 kilogram of fluids. Then we can think, what percentage is 4.5 out of 75? Then we can do, for example, 4.5 divided by 75, which gives us 0.06. Then we multiply it with 100 and it will be 6%. And we remember that 6% of an adolescent person is moderate dehydration. In cases where there is mild to moderate dehydration due to diarrhea, we can generally treat it effectively with an oral rehydration solution therapy. While in severe dehydration, we will generally use IV fluid replacement as well. The oral rehydration solutions are mixtures from bags that we can mix with water. Generally, one package is dissolved in one liter of drinking water, but the package will give directions. They essentially contain glucose, salt and potassium as a mixture. In patients with mild dehydration, we can give 50 milliliter per kilogram of the oral rehydration solution within four hours. Then supplementary oral rehydration solution is given if there is more vomiting or diarrhea. When the rehydration is complete, we can give a maintenance therapy of 100 milliliter per kilogram of oral rehydration solution for each 24 hours until the diarrhea stops. Now, quickly, let's say this patient rather needs IV fluid replacement therapy to restore the hydration. It could be many reasons. For example, he's not able to swallow oral rehydration therapy. For that, we need to further determine the water deficit in liter to be able to treat with IV. When we know the percentage of water loss, we can calculate the water deficit in liters. The way we do this is by multiplying the weight in kilogram with the percentage of dehydration and then dividing it by 100. So we remember our patient was 75 kilogram and he had a 6% water loss. So 75 times 6 is 450, which when divided by 100 give us 4.5. So now we know that 4.5 liters is our water deficit. Now we can administer the fluid intravenously. We administer half of the water deficit during the first 8 hours. Then 
the remainder over the next 16 hours. This is not accounting for ongoing losses, which we also then need to replace as they occur. The solution we administer is generally Ringer's solution, which is a type of isotonic crystalloid fluid solution available in most hospitals. Now for the maintenance therapy, there's a nice rule of thumb that we can use both for children and adults. It is called the 4 to 1 rule. It gives us the hourly fluid rate to administer based on the weight of the patient. So we categorize it in the body weight from 0 to 10, from 10 to 20, and 20 plus kilogram. So for the first 10 kilogram of the patient, we will give 4 milliliter for each kilogram. For the next 10 kilogram of the patient, we will give 2 milliliter for each kilogram. Then, for every kilo over 20, the patient is going to get 1 milliliter of fluid per extra kilogram. If we still say our patient is 75 kilo, we can easily determine the maintenance fluid amount. So the first 10 kilo, he will get 4 milliliter each, so that's 40 milliliter. The next 10 kilo, he will get 2 milliliter per kilo, so that's a 20 milliliter extra. Then the last 55 kilo, he will get 55 milliliter per kilo. So then we know that 40 plus 20 plus 55 equals 115. And we end up then with 115 milliliter per hour in maintenance. That was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If it was helpful for you, we would really appreciate if you could subscribe. Thank you.